Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Welcome. Thank you for coming tonight to our live broadcast on Pastor Sam May of Deliverance Bible Church. And we count it all joy that God has allowed us to be with each other, with this uh, medium, medium, the way we're doing things now, this media way we're doing things. We thank God that he's allowed us to do this, though uh, for the most part, we can't meet together uh, in person. Uh, we can meet online. And this is a great thing that God uh, is doing by way of keeping his word out. You can't stifle the word of God. You, God will get his word out by any means possible. So we thank him for allowing us to be a part of getting his word out during this time, uh, this way. So we praise God for you being here tonight. We thank God for his grace, his love, and his mercy. Our God is so good. Our God is so kind. Our God is so awesome. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. He is an awesome God. So we bless him and we praise him tonight. Say, listen, um, hit that share button. Uh, share this broadcast with somebody that you know. Uh, tell them that Deliverance Bible Church, Word Alive, Bible studies on the air so they can receive this word uh, tonight. Also, remember what we receive, we're supposed to share. We're supposed to share. Our, we are supposed to be uh, rivers flowing. We're not supposed to be cul-de-sacs, but we're supposed to be like rivers. We receive and we let go. We receive and we share. So I uh, share this with somebody tonight that believe this word is going to help us tonight. God's word always helps us, but uh, this word is going to help us tonight and how God wants us to live our lives. We're here again. We're here every evening on, on Wednesday evenings. We're here at 7 p.m. and our live Sunday broadcast is on Sunday mornings at 1130 a.m. So we certainly encourage you come back and be with us Sunday morning. Uh, as we continue to bring you a word from God out of the word of God. Uh, pray with me, if you would, at this time. God, we're grateful for your loving kindness and your grace. You're awesome, God. You are mighty God. You are provider. You are our protector. And we praise you even for right now, for our going out and our coming in. Even today, we give you thanks, God. You kept us from uh, this time last week to today and we could say it was nothing uh but your power and your grace to watch over us and we say thank you this evening for jesus christ we say thank you uh, because of him we can call you father we can cry out abba daddy you are father that's a we can call you with that term of endearment because you call us your children and we are so grateful for that tonight god we thank you for life health and strength we thank you that you are a hiding place, God. You are very present help in the time of trouble. You, God, are everything that we need. And so we say thank you tonight. I pray, God, tonight that your word will help somebody. I pray, God, tonight that your word will lift up a head tonight, God. Uh, bring peace to a troubled mind, God. Bring, bring greater understanding to the life that we live in you, that you promised never to leave us nor forsake us. You promised always to be there for us. And we say thank you tonight. Thank you for uh, those who are hearing tonight. I pray for households tonight. I pray for every household that is under the sound of my voice. I pray that you, your help will be evident. I pray that your peace will be evident in that home where the enemy is trying to, to sow strife. I pray for peace and unity tonight in the name of Jesus. Wherever there might be confusion and chaos, God, I pray, God, that you would speak a word, God, and that you would bring calm to that house tonight. Help the people in that home to see, God, that they are not each other's enemy, that the devil would do what he could, can to break them up or cause the family to fall. But I pray for the peace of that house in the name of Jesus, thank you that you provide. Thank you that you watch over. Thank you that you keep. Help every home to look up tonight to you, God. Sometimes when we look around, uh, we can get discouraged. 
uh, but we can always be encouraged in you. We can always have hope in you. So I pray for households tonight. I pray for mothers, fathers, uh, the children, the young people, God. I pray whoever is in that position of guardian tonight and whoever, oh God, is being uh, helped and supported in that home, I pray, God, that you help tonight. I pray, God, that you show yourself strong on behalf of your people tonight. We bless you. You are good and you are kind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. It's so good to be back with you tonight. I, I pray that you had a, a good week uh, away from this broadcast. We do broadcast on Sunday mornings, but I pray that you had a good week from last week to this week. Um, uh, basically, you did have a good week, uh, even though things might not have went to exactly to your plan, but God got you through, so that, that's that's a good week. As old folks, you say, he got me up this morning. I was slow in my right mind. I might have some issues, but he got me up, physical strength. He, I was clothed in my right mind, as they used to say, that I still know how to think on his goodness and his mercy and his great grace. So we thank him and we bless him tonight. So I want to uh, do this tonight. If 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 uh, if you just go with me for uh, time together, there there's a uh, there's a I call it a danger that we that we face in life, uh, and that uh, there are times that we start taking things for granted, that things can lose their importance. Uh, things become common. You know, sometimes uh, some, when something is new or is fresh, you know, it gets your attention. But after you hear it over a number of times, it kind of becomes common. And when things become common, sometimes we just, just take it for granted. It's just something that, that we do. There's a, there's a danger in marriages. And I want to, I, this is not a marriage this is not a marriage message, but I'm going to say this to y'all out there who are married. Don't let your life and your marriage become common. Uh, just, don't just take your spouse for granted. Just that they're going to do. Because when you, when you start doing that, then the, the importance and even the excitement wears off. And then you could just go through the motions. Sometimes when things become common, you just go through the motions. Don't I, There's a word right there. Don't go through the motions in your marriage. Okay, Don't take your marriage for granted. OK, but in life, there are things that we can hear, we can do. It becomes common to us and it, it, it loses its impact. And um, as I was considering uh, in the Lord, uh, the word tonight is that uh, there, there's something that I do every Wednesday evening when when we come on the broadcast. And that is that I, I, I quote uh, some verses from Psalm one. I, I quote verses from Psalm 1, but what the Lord uh, uh, kind of impressed on me is that uh, I can quote that so much, and, and, and for, for me, it, it's a real thing, but we can hear it so much that it can, it can, it can become common. It, it can lose its, its emphasis, and we could just start taking it for granted. As a matter of fact, um, I, I, uh, I uh, have to check myself sometimes because sometimes we do stuff out of um, um, protocol, or out of obligation, and, and really the value of doing it gets lost. I used to tell, I'm going to get there. I used to I say to when we were having, who was ever having a meeting at church, uh, be it the choir rehearsal, um, um, the, the, the Usherbird, Usherbird, or any other meetings you have, um, I would say this, be careful about using prayer at the beginning of your meeting, at the beginning of your time. Don't, don't say we need to pray so we can get to uh, don't don't say we need to pray so we can get the choir rehearsal. Don't we need to pray so we can have this meeting? No, no, because see now you're just using prayer as something common because uh, you're supposed to do it. Uh, what you're supposed to be doing, you're supposed to be praying so God will help the choir rehearsal, praying that God will help the meeting go the way He wants it to go. Don't just use it as a as a as a add on to the front to get to what you want to do because then it's just it's just becoming common. So, so in, in, in this Psalm 1, many of you who have been with me for uh, this, this time being that we've been in this season of, of broadcasting, you've heard most of the time you've come on, you've heard me start talking from Psalm 1. And so tonight 
we want to take a closer look at Psalm 1. There's something in here. Uh, I believe there's something in here that can help us if we take a closer look to it and, and what God is saying, if you would, about our lives. So if you if you got your Bibles there, if you got your device there, you can get to it. Why don't you turn to Psalm, Psalm 1? And I want to talk about out of Psalm 1, I want to talk about two lifestyles, two results. Two lifestyles, two results, two lifestyles, two results, Psalm 1. And I'm, I'm just going to give you this up, up front going in here. Uh, there are two ways of life that have two different outcomes, two, two lifestyles, two results. There are two ways of life that have two different outcomes, and the outcomes are totally opposite of each other. I'll tell you that up front, okay? Two, two lifestyles, two results okay um let let's look at let, let's look at it uh ver, verse one uh i, I want to let me put it to you this way then i talk about it a little bit i won't do other too much too long but we need to catch this uh avoid the lifestyle that exhibits wrong direction behavior listen there is a lifestyle that exhibits that you're going in the wrong direction wrong direction behavior remember remember Two lifestyles, two results. So there's a lifestyle that exhibits wrong, wrong direction behavior. Okay, wrong direction behavior. Your behavior says you're going in the wrong direction. So let, let's look at it. The psalmist here, Psalm one, which is the beginning uh, of the book of Psalms. Uh, it is the book of Psalms collectively, but each one by itself is a psalm. And some of the psalms, when they were psalm, were a psalm by themselves, were actually a song. It was some of them was written as songs, S O N G S, or as a song, S O N G. Some of them were sang or sung, uh, doing a journey. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, some, uh, they had to go up to Jerusalem for different feasts and things. Sometimes they had songs, and it became a psalm. It became a psalm. So it's a psalm by itself. It's the book of the Psalms, but this is Psalm 1. It's, it's some, I'm sorry, I'm not messing with nobody. It's Psalm 23. It's a psalm by itself. So uh, in Psalm 1, I hope I don't trip myself up here as I go along on that one. It says, it says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That I'm going to talk about as I go ungodly. That's those who are living guilty. They're living wrong before God. They are guilty by living wrong before God. That's the ungodly. He says, bless um, the well-being uh, of the man, uh, the fulfillment of the man that does not walk. A man who is fulfilled does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That's, not, that's about advice. He says, uh, listen, as, as a child of God, don't get your advice from the ungodly. Don't get your advice from those who are... Uh, guilty living before God. Be careful, child of God, where you get your advice from. Be careful, child of God, the information that you so quickly and strongly repeat, uh, that which you've heard and you repeat so strongly. Be careful where you get your information from. Uh, we can relate to this um, just in this world of, 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 of social media. There's a lot of stuff put out on social media don't have nothing to do with God. They present it. It sounds good. It, it, it sounds like it ought to be carried, but you, we ought not be carrying that stuff. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I've said before, uh, you, if, you, if you're going to post something on social media, make sure you read it before you post it, especially when it comes from somebody else. Make sure you read it before you post it. Really understand what it says because there is a, listen, there is a lot of ungodly counsel uh, counsel not about God, counsel that goes contrary to everything that God has said, being posted on social media. Read it. Look at the, listen to this, look at the language, the language. Look at the words that are being used before you hit that share button. Make sure that whatever that thing is, is in line with God. Be, be careful that you don't walk in your lifestyle is guided by the counsel of the ungodly, okay? All right, listen to this. So he says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of, of sinners, the path or the, 
or uh, yeah, the path of sinners, if you would. Uh, this is about those who are under the wrath of God's judgment. There's a path there in this. There's a, there's a, if you would listen to this, there's a road that they're on, okay? Uh, we should not, he says, don't stand in the path of sinners. He says, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't stand in the path of the sinners, okay? Uh, and this is the idea of some living somewhere, standing and remaining there. Okay, the path of the sinner is what we used to walk in. So we should be not be walking in that path anymore. Then he says, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. This is this is the boastful, those who deride others are boastful and they show contempt for others. So he he listen to this. He said, this is the wrong lifestyle. This is wrong lifestyle behavior. This behavior is, is going in a certain in a certain direction. Now listen, uh, so you could read this is is do not walk in the counsel of ungodly. Do not stand in the path of sinners. Do not sit in the seat of scornful. Did you catch that? Do not. Uh, uh, mama, mama them, when they would say do not, they say you better not. Y'all remember that? Uh, some of y'all back in the day, grandmama, they would look at boy and they said, boy, you better not. You better not look at me way, that way. Do not turn up your face at me. Do not frown at me. Y'all remember that? When, when mama and grandmama them were saying, they said, boy, you don't, don't go there. They were saying, don't go there. And so the psalmist says to us, don't go there. There is a, there is a lifestyle that exhibits wrong direction. But the behavior is they're going in the wrong, in the wrong direction. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Um, this is our past. Uh, before we were saved, this is where we were. This is where we were before we were saved. We were, we were, <laughs> we, we counseled with the ungodly about the deeds that we were going to do and got their approval. We, 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 we walked in the way of the sinner. We stood in the way of the sinner and, and listen to this. And we sat in the seat. Of we sat down. And see, when, the issue is when you sit down, you get comfortable. Yeah, yeah. When you sit down. See, there's one thing in walking. There's another thing in standing. But when you sit down, you get comfortable. So the, we used to be there and we were comfortable in that lifestyle. Now, if you will admit that, because most of us want to act like we weren't that bad, but you were in there somewhere. All of us, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So this is the way we, we, we are a bunch of used to be's, used to be's. We used to be that way. We used to walk in the counsel of the God. We used to stand in the path of the sinners. We used to sit in the seat of the scornful. That is the way we used to be. And that behavior was exhibiting we're walking in the wrong direction. But he says, blessed is, is the man. Fulfilled is the man that does not exhibit this behavior. Does not exhibit this behavior. But then... Notice what he says uh, in verses 2 and 3, and I'm just going to sit there for just a little while. Um, uh, we are to live a lifestyle that exhibits right direction, behavior, and its results. We are to live a lifestyle. Our lifestyle, listen to this, should exhibit right direction and behavior. In, a, in other words, our lifestyle exhibits the direction that we're walking in. Your lifestyle, your li how you do life, exhibits it manifests manifests it puts on display the direction that you are going in okay so watch this watch this live a lifestyle that exists exhibits right uh, direction behavior and its results but his delight notice he talks about the wrong behavior in in verse one he said, blessed is the man who does not do these things. But when you get to verse 2, he says, but, because it's a change, his delight is in the law of the Lord. I got, I got to stop there. Um, delight, what you delight in, what you pleasure, your desire, your desire, your, listen to this, your, uh, your appetite. <laughs> your, no, okay, let me see if I can do this. In, in verse 
the, the first verse, it was about having an appetite for these ungodly things, these things that were in the wrong direction. But he says here that you have your delight or your appetite or your pleasure, desire is in the word, the law of the Lord. L listen, this is, this is, I call, listen to this, y'all. I call this an appetite change. You remember when we were, and you remember how, can, can we be real? You remember how when you was out there, you was out there and you just enjoyed doing what you were doing. You have an appetite, okay? That's because you were dead and trespassing and sin, okay? And so you had an appetite for that stuff. But now that you were in the Lord, I'm talking to somebody, now, now that you're in the Lord, you need to have a different, you need to have a different appetite. You need to get, listen to this, you need to get a different desire, spiritual Spiritual desire, appetite. Y'all know appetite, uh, especially for food to satisfy that that bodily need. Y'all, y'all, y'all know that. Um, and, and many times, many times we ate it because it tastes good, but we just we just learned to like certain food. We have a, a appetite. Okay, we need to get a change. A, a, a appetite, and and I've learned that appetite can change over time. It, it can it can be changed. Let, let, let me do this. Let let me do this. Um, let me talk about this changed appetite. Do not talk about the changing of the appetite. Uh, Jesus said, Jesus said in Matthew 4 and 4, when the enemy uh, tried to uh, get him to sin, uh, to, uh, you know, seduce him to sin. And, and when he came out of the wilderness, uh, when Satan uh, presented uh, to him, he said, you know, if you're the son of God, command these stones to turn to bread. Jesus' response was in verse 4, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the from the mouth of God, notice not bread alone, not just physical, but spiritual. We need physical bread, but we need spiritual food. We need we need uh, we need physical bread for our physical nutrition. We need spiritual food of the Word of God for our spiritual nutrition here. Okay, so 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 there is this thing about the Word that is about spiritual nutrition. So we get the appetite. Now this is what I want to say to you: you the appetites can change. Appetites can change. You can you can have had an appetite for something at one point and don't have an appetite for it anymore. I, I'm, I'm just telling y'all, your appetite, and many of y'all know your appetite changes, but your appetite in this case changes from something not good for you to something that's good for you. I, listen, uh, I used to go to Red Robin, uh, and uh, you know this was a while ago, and, I, and, I, and it was a burger, I believe it was called the Whiskey River Burger. Whiskey. Now I, I know what you heard. You heard the word whiskey. I, I didn't like the burger because of the whiskey, because the alcoholic content. You know, when you when you cook alcohol, y'all do know that the when you cook the alcohol, the alcoholic content gets cooked out of it. You just have the flavor. But it wasn't even because of flavor, because it had so much stuff on it. It had uh, it had the hamburger. It had um, I think it had onion rings on it, and it had cheese, and it had this. And it had that, and they and it was the it had the barbecue sauce. I believe what was was really the barbecue sauce was gave it the whiskey river taste, whatever it was. I used to just man every time I go to, every time I go to uh, uh uh you know Red Robin, my my wife knew what I was gonna get, cause I had an appetite for that whiskey river burger. And then uh, as time went on, uh, you know they began coming out with the menus that told you what the caloric value of all that stuff was. And, and the different stuff that went into it. And so one day um, I went to a luncheon, a lunch meeting, and uh, they brought the menu out, but they also brought, because this was before they, they put everything within the menu, they also brought a, a, a side uh, piece of paper that said what the ingredients were and, and what the caloric value and all the stuff was in the different meals they had. And when I looked, up whiskey river burger and when i saw the fat content <laughs> the sodium content and all the stuff i saw in there and this, i think the sodium content of that burger was what should be was the was the well, what you should have in a whole day a whole day's worth of sodium was in that burger once i read all that stuff you know what my appetite changed it i i, I moved away uh, as a matter of fact that day that very day when I, they, when I read what was in that burger, that day I had a salad. 
my appetite changed. What I'm trying to tell you is your appetite can change. Why did my appetite change? Because when I looked at that, I realized I was confronted with the thing that that was not good for me. You know, if you got high blood blood pressure, high blood pressure and stuff like that, all that sodium and stuff is not good for you, okay? So what was best for me was to make an appetite change and stop ordering that Whiskey River burger because it was not good for me. You can make it. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to encourage somebody tonight is that when it comes to your life, when you look at what God says about your life, your desires for life, your, your pleasures of life, your appetite for life, there ought to be a change, a change away from standing in the way uh, of the sinners, from the counsel of the ungodly, and sitting in the seat of the scornful. When you were dead in trespass and trespassing that was your ap- and sin, that was your appetite. You enjoyed that because part of eating is to enjoy what you eat. But now that you are a child of God, your appetite needs to change. You need to, in the spiritual realm, you you need to have an appetite for the word of, of God. There's nutrition. There, there's all the stuff in the word of God that you need for your spirit spiritual being and you need to stop feeding the flesh listen stop feeding the flesh on those old things of the flesh and you need to start feed speed feeding your spirit help me tonight god you need to start feeding your spirit with the word of god you need to have a delight you need to want you ought to want the word of god you ought to it's just like when you eat physical food most of y'all if the truth was told you don't miss a meal some of you, not only do you not miss a meal, you eat when you're not even hungry, okay? Don't miss the meal in the Word of God. Don't miss feeding off the Word of God. You, as you eat daily, you ought to eat the Word of God daily. You ought to have it in you. I'm going to talk about that this in just a minute. I'm about to move there. But you need to get a new appetite. You got to have an appetite for the things of God. But His delight is in the law of the Lord, the Word of God. But then he says, and in his law, he meditates day and night. Now watch. You can't walk around with the Bible open all the time reading it. You can't walk around with your device all the time in front of you reading it. So what you need to do is because it's spiritual food, you need to get it in you. You need to get the word of God in you. Okay? Get the word of God in you. That means that you need to have, if it's, if it's some type of memory program that you need, uh, get you some uh, five by seven cards, write it somewhere you can see it, put it in your device where you can see it. You need to get the word of God in you. That way you can meditate on the word of God day and night. You need the word of God daily. Daily, you need the word of God. You eat food every day for your physical being. You need to have the word of God every day for your spiritual being. And you ought to delight in his word. You ought to delight in what he gives you in his word because it's for your spiritual being. The physical food builds you up physically. The spiritual food of the word of God will build you up spiritually. It can, it can impact your life. Listen, there are food. Listen, this is, oh, Jesus, help me tonight. Food you eat. This is why you should, you know, some, at some point we got to start looking at what we eat because we need to learn to eat healthy. Healthy food helps us in our body. Listen, you need the spiritual word of God to make your spirit healthy. To make your spirit healthy. Not You don't want to be weak-spirited because you're not getting the word of God. But you got to get the word of God in you this is not a verse a day to keep the devil away this is not just what i did no it's food for your spiritual being and you need to get it in he says you meditate you you chew on it listen you ponder upon it you 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 think about it over and over again because what you want listen to this listen to this (laughs) oh god help me as food can become a part of your physical body. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. The word of God should be, become a part of your spiritual being. You see, l- listen, listen, I don't mean no harm. But sometimes, and, and you know, I know there's people who have glandular problems, hormone problems. I'm not talking about that. But sometimes you can tell people eat healthy. 
I'm not talking about they got some kind of some medical issues. I'm just talking about some people, you know, they just eat. They eat. We call it eat healthy because they look healthy, not healthy, well healthy, but healthy. Listen, in the spiritual realm, how you eat will show up in how you deal life, deal with life. And if you deal with life the way God wants you to deal with life, because the word of God is in you, you are spiritually healthy. But you can also be spiritually anemic when you don't have the word of God in you. But you need to get it. You need to get it in you. He, in his word, he meditates day and he meditates day and night. Uh, God told Joshua in Joshua 1 and 8, he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, shall never, it should not leave you, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to to all that is written in it. In other words, you're not just getting it to have it, you're getting it to live it, that you may do everything that's written in it. But you gotta get it in you. You need the word in you, okay? Now, uh, li listen, he says, he says here, he says here, um, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he does meditate day and night. We're talking about right, right direction, behavior, and his results. Okay, lifestyle, okay? Then when you get to verse 3, he says, He shall be like a tree. He who shall be like a tree. He who meditates on the word day and night. He who delights in the law of the Lord. He, that's the he here. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season. Then he says, whose leaf also, also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Listen, it, it, the word in you, this is the impact of the word on the life of a believer, okay? This is, God's word will impact impact your life and this this is this is positive impact here get it in you this is about your this is this is about your spiritual well-being the word of god can bring spiritual well-being to your life spiritual wholeness to to your life watch what he says he says he, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water let me slow down why down by the river because it said that down by the river banks uh, is the best soil. Down by the river banks is the best soil. I'm going to talk about the river in just a few minutes, but down by the river banks is the best soil. So the tree is planted where the best, where there's the best soil. He says it brings forth its fruit. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Who and it, but in a season, but its leaves shall not wither. Withering of the leaves can uh, uh, describe be like difficult times. Difficult times. Withering of the leaves. You see, when the tree is planted by the rivers of the waters and, and its roots are down in there, it can always get to where the moisture is, okay? Let, let me read some more of something, then I'll come back. Look at Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah 17, Jeremiah 17, uh, verses 7 and 8. It was the same idea, y'all, same idea. Um, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Trust him, hope in him. For he shall by, here it is, be like a tree planted by the waters, tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. If the tree is planted and it spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes, but it will, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Look at, look at the commonality of these two verses. It's a tree planted by the rivers, by the rivers of water. Jeremiah said it spreads out its roots. And, and uh, 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 the psalmist says the leaf shall not wither. Uh, Jeremiah says it will not fear when he comes. Wither, heat is about difficult times. Jeremiah says, it will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor rain, difficult times, nor will cease from yielding fruit. He, Jeremiah says it won't cease from yielding fruit. Uh, 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 the, the psalmist says it will bring fruit in the seed. No, no, it's the commonality. The commonality is fruit, but the commonality also is not just fruit. The commonality is that when difficult times come, drought, 
when difficult times come, heat, when, when difficult times come, the tree will not be anxious. The, the tree will do what it's supposed to do in spite of, in spite of the difficult times that it finds itself in. And the psalmist says, the man who, who meditates the word of God day and night, the man or woman who finds uh, his delight in the word of the Lord, there's something about God's word that when it's in you, I'm talking to somebody, you need to get this tonight. When you get God's word in you and you meditate on his word and his word becomes a part of your life, there is some sustaining power. When you get it in you, there is the sustaining power in the word of God, when you when you when you take the word in and you obey the word and your life is being transformed, trouble is going to come. Difficulties are going to come, but both Jeremiah and the psalmist said that those troubles, those difficulties won't keep you from succeeding in life, and they both tie this thing to bearing fruit. Difficult times, hard times come, but yet because you got the word of God in you, is not that you memorize it, but you have meditated on it. You have, you get a nutritional, spiritual, nutritional value out of it. It's because it's a part of your life that when stuff starts happening, you won't wilt, your leaf won't wither. You will not get anxious. Oh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. You won't get anxious. You won't fear because anxiety and fear are, 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 are reaction to what's going on around you. That's what they are. We get anxious by what we see and what we hear. We fear because of what we see and what we hear. And they take us, I've, I've said before, fear and anxiety takes you into dark spaces. I've said before, fear, anxiety, worry will cause you to write the ending of the story and you never get to that ending because you, you get all wrapped up in what's going on around you. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. That's God's word. So you got to get that in you because trouble times are coming. Trouble times are going to be around you and you can still, look, you can still bear fruit in the trouble times. Somebody needs to get that tonight. You can still be fruitful. Times we're living in right now, you can still be fruitful. You can still do what God has called you to do to be fruitful, even though the times around you are not fruit friendly. Oh, that's good. You can bear fruit even though the times around you are not fruit friendly. Here's why. Because the times around you are not affecting what's going on the inside of you. What's going on the inside of you are helping, is helping you get through the times around you. That's the difference. That's what we need to catch. That's what God wants to happen in our lives. So listen, I got to talk to you here. I got to talk to you here because this is for somebody tonight. When, 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 when I was listening to God, when God was, was sharing his word with me, here it is. Today we are in difficult times. Today we are in trying times. Today we are in hard times. Today we are in weary ink times. Today things in many places are not going well. All of us got something going on. Some of us got more going on than others, but the situation that we're in right now, especially with this plague, and they keep and they just, uh, you know, they're shutting down again now because you know every time they, things happen and people do what people do, and so it, you know the infection rate goes or whatever. So now they're trying to shut things down because they're saying it could get worse before it gets better. And they're saying if we do these things, we'll keep it from getting worse. Where these are some troubling times. These are some wearying times. These are some difficult times. We, we talked about it before. I don't want to wear this stuff out, but you know, you, you got the job issue. You got the health issue. You got the education of your children issue. You got all this stuff that we're dealing with. This COVID has, has just, this whole bunch of stuff has come forth on us now because of COVID-19. And some people are having difficult times just dealing with life doing this COVID-19, but I heard the word of God say that his word in you will give you the spiritual fortification that you need to deal with the times that are going on around you. That's why you need it in you so you can speak it over your life. We told you before, stop speaking negativity, not stop speaking misery, stop speaking defeat. 
feet. Stop speaking how bad it is. Speak the word of God over your life because in troubled times, in difficult times, in trying times, God's word can keep you. And the reason God's word can keep you is because it's from God himself. Is God keeping you in his word as his word is in you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. You don't have to doubt. When God's word is in you, it will fortify you. And things are going on around you on the outside, but it doesn't have to mess you up on the inside because you've got God's word in your life. And it's not just in your life, but you are living and you are walking in God's word. That's why you got to have some word in you. I'm more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ that loves me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. If God be for me, who can be against me? I am the head and not the tail. I am the child of the king. My father is great. He's awesome and mighty. My father is king of kings. He's lord of lords. My father is the creator of the universe. And if he created, since he created the universe, he can certainly keep me with these things going around me. You got to have that word in you. You got to have that word in you. Listen, let me, let me, uh, uh, yes, yes, listen. Um, there's a lot of talk today. There's a lot, a lot of talk today, and and rightfully so. Uh, they're calling it uh, mental health. Mental health. I'm sorry. They're saying that we're in the midst of a mental health crisis. A mental health crisis. What what was happening now is uh, because of a lot of stuff that people are having to deal with right now that they're not doing very well. There's so many different areas of their lives that have been affected. They're not doing very well. It's called a mental health crisis. And so uh, some people have breakdowns. Some people, are, you know, they, there's people, and, I, you know, I'm just talking. I'm just talking to you. There's people who I just heard another other day about another nurse, doctor. They, they're quitting their jobs because the stress, the stress is so great. They want to help people. They want, they want to be able to help people, but people are dying and they're getting, they, they just can't, they, they, they're having a problem dealing with that because they, they, they feel like they're failing. They feel like they're failing and so they're walking away. And it's not that they want to walk away, it's just that they're to the point now where they can't, they can't deal with it anymore. They can't deal with it anymore. There's people, uh, they're saying that homes and, and some homes, domestic violence rate has gone up. Because you can't get away. Huh? I mean, you can't get away. They, 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 feel, they feel hemmed in. They feel boxed in. And uh, because this is not normal. This is not normal. Now, <laughs> now the person who, uh, 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 now people who never got on their nerves, people who never got on their nerves before are getting on their nerves because they, they're with them all the time. There's a lot of things happening. They're saying that uh, in, in many cases, children are suffering now because uh, some of the, the parents are taking their frustration on their children. They're saying some children will be safer in school than they are at home because of all this stuff that's coming. This stuff is coming down on people. They call it a mental health crisis. Mentally, the toll that is taken on people mentally. mentally but I'm, I'm believing I'm believing that it, it, whatever you, wherever you have a mental health crisis is also emotional because for me, for me, I didn't write a book, but for me, mental health and emotional health go together. In other words, if you are unstable mentally, mentally, you will be unstable emotionally. And vice versa, if you are unstable emotionally, you are unstable mentally because those things work together. But they're calling mental health. So people are giving up. Some people are checking out. The strain of life, the issues of life, the, the wearying of life is taking this toll on people. But I'm holding that by God's word, if you are a child of God, you don't have to be brought down by the issues of life. If you are a child of God, you don't have to be in mental and emotional, emotional distress. I'm holding that God said in his word that if you get his word in you and you believe on the word and you get it in you and you use his word in your life and you claim his word in your life, that when you speak his word in your life, that's why we say speak God's word over the situation. If it's a mind thing, speak God's word over your mind so your mind can hear it. Speak God's word over your, your emotional condition. 
claim God's word. I will not fear. God told me not to fear. God says, God says, I, I, I have a sound mind. You got to claim this stuff from the word of God. That's why God gave us his word. That's the pathway that we're on and moving in the right direction. So you got to learn to claim this thing. It's not that this stuff ain't real. This stuff is real. These folk, these folk are walking around here talking about this is a hoax. I heard it was a sad, it was a sad story the other day. Uh, I heard it uh, on one of the news medias. Uh, they said that uh, this nurse was saying that this person died and they died saying this is a hoax. This is not real. Well, they dead. The virus took them out. This thing is real. But it does not have to mess you up mentally. It does not have to mess you up emo emotionally. Stand on the word of God. Get the word of God in you and, and proclaim the word of God over your life. It can bring stability to God. The word of God can bring stability to your life. The word of God can bring wholeness to your life. But you got to believe that since God said that's how it is with your life, that's how it is in your life. You got to get this. You got to hold on. And I'm talking to somebody tonight. And you might know somebody. You might know somebody who couldn't get this tonight. You need to share this with them. That the word of God can bring stability to your life. You don't have to lose it. You don't have to go off. You don't have to go into dark spaces. You don't have to become a mental and emotional mess. You don't have to. The word of God can sustain you. The word of God can keep you going when it doesn't look like you're going anywhere. The word of God can bring you hope when everything around you seems hopeless. You don't have to be in despair. Trust God and his word because in all that's going on around you, he says that the tree, the man like the tree can still bear fruit. You can thrive in a bad situation. You can thrive when all circumstances are against you. You can thrive even though others around you are not doing well. You can still do well because you got and you're holding on and you're believing and you're trusting in the word of God. Uh, and I hope somebody gets that tonight. I hope you shared that with somebody after this broadcast or whatever, because somebody you know is having mental and emotional issues. Now you need to guide them to the word and show them what God's word says. God's word says that through the drought, you'll be all right. Through the heat, you will be all right. When the seasons change, you will be all right because you got the word of God in you and the word of God will fortify <laughs> The word of God will build you up on the inside so that when stuff, as this stuff is happening on the outside, it doesn't have to crush you. It doesn't have to crush your thinking. It doesn't have to crush your emotion. You can be stable in spite of what's going on, in spite of what's going around you. Because the psalmist said, and Jeremiah said, that in spite of what's going on around you, trust in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. And when stuff is going on, you can still bear fruit. You can still be fruitful in spite of your conditions. You can still do it. Why is that important? Why is that important? Why is that important? Because you see, listen to this. Fruit bearing for the believer was about the Father and the Lord. I, I, just, I had to try to encourage you there because you re I really want you to catch this. See, fruit bearing is not about the tree. It's about the one who, who, who plants the tree. Watch this. Watch this. The, na the name of the plant. Fruit bearing for the believer is about the Father's glory. Listen to what Jesus says in John 15, 8. I'm almost I'm about through with you. Listen to this. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Bear much fruit when? Bear fruit when things aren't well. Bear fruit when things are, are going sideways. They, I think that was with cattywampus. Bear fruit when the situation says one thing, but you believe God anyhow. Bear fruit when the circumstances of life are trying to weigh you down, yet you have the word of God in you to hold you up. Bear fruit in difficult times. Bear fruit in trying times bear fruit in wearying time. See, you can still bear fruit to God's glory. And one of the greatest testimonies of a child of God is things weren't going well, but God brought me through. 
Things were messed up, but God kept me. Things were not well, but God lifted me up and he brought me all the way. That's fruit to God's glory. That's fruit to God's glory. That's what that is. And that's a lifestyle. That's a lifestyle. Bearing fruit to God's glory is a lifestyle. And it's not about everything's well, everything's fine. I know how good it is. No, I have these issues, but I'm still standing. I have these trials, but I'm still moving forward. I have all this stuff in my life. I have not given up. I have not given out and have not given in because the word of God is fortifying me, is keeping me. Is moving me to the place where God would have me so God be, can be put on display in my life. That's, that's a lifestyle direction of, of the saved folk. That, that puts God on display. That puts God on display in your life. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. But you got to have the word of God in you. Word of God in you. I'm, I'm telling you, you got that word again, uh, God in you. There are times, I'm not, this is not philosophy. I'm telling you about the time because stress hits our lives. Stress and anxiety hits, hits our lives. And sometimes I've got to pull back. And I have, my wife tells me, every night, I got to pull back because I feel the anxiety sometimes of things. And I feel and I feel the stress of things. And I got to pull back, pull back and say, wait a minute. This is not even about me. <laughs> this thing ain't about me. This thing is about God. I, I have to not get beside myself. I have to, some of us, can I talk? Some of us need to stop making life all about us. It'll help you. We got to understand that this life that we live is about God. And God wants to have the glory in our life, get the glory from our lives. And the glory of God shows up many times in the most difficult situations when we being fortified by the word of God, we still bear fruit in spite of the situation. That's, that's the lifestyle. That's the lifestyle that God wants us to live. But you can't live it without the word of God. You can't do it without the word of God. You don't need philosophy. You don't need I'm okay, you're okay. You need the word of God. So let me get through what you hear. Let me let me let me get through what you hear. Um, so th that's the result. That what happens. That's what happens when we live the lifestyle that's going in the right direction. The result. See, here's the result. That in spite of what's going on, God gets the glory. And so the rest of it says, here's the results of the wrong lifestyle. The ungodly are not so. Those people that were mentioned up in verse 1, the ungodly are not so, but like the chaff which the wind drives away. There was a threshing floor. And uh, there was the wheat, all the wheat have hole on it, it's called chaff. And so the chaff and the wheat had to be separated because the chaff was no good. And sometimes they would stand and, and they'd have a breeze and they would, they would do like that and let it go. The, the wheat would fall to the threshing floor and the chaff would be blown away because the chaff was useless. And he's saying, he's saying the ungodly, the ones who have turned away from God, the ones who have nothing to do with God, he says their life is like chaff which the wind drives away. He said, the ungodly are not sober like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They have no place. They have no place there. Listen to this. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Every, those things up there in verse 1, God says it's going to come into it. But the righteous is the ones that God watches over. Okay. And your righteousness is in how you walk in God, how He keeps you, He calls you righteous when you keep you when you keep His word in, in you. Uh, we took before I got that experiential righteousness, living it out is having the word in you. And when things come against you, there's enough word in you to keep you living the way God wants you to live. That's what it's all about. That's the way. That is the way that we've been called to live. And that's the result that God is looking for from our life. And God gave us, gave us his word so that he can see the results that he wants out of our lives. So trust him anyhow. We got stuff going on. Stuff is going to be going on all the time. We just, in, we just seem like we're on a heightened alert more and more. But stuff is always going on. Trust him. Use his word in your life. I know I'm repeating myself, but somebody needs to get this again. Use his word in your life. His word can bring stability. His word can bring hope. His word is your strength. His word is your peace. 
And God has guaranteed his word. God says, my word shall not go out from me and come back void, but it will accomplish the purpose that I send it forth to do. It will prosper. His word will prosper in your life's ability. His word will prosper in your life's strength. But you need to use his word in your life. And when you use his word in your life, you're bearing fruit to his glory. And that's what he's looking for from your life. Bow with me if you would. God, thank you for your word. I pray that somebody was encouraged um, in your word tonight. The, the, the enemy would do what he can to cause your children to give up, to cause your children to be weary, to cause your children, God, to, to be weak and and all those things he wants to bring against us, God. But I thank you for your word tonight. Somebody being reminded that it's your word that fortifies us. It, it's your word that can keep us, God, the way you want us to be in the path you want us to be in. And God, is about, it's about your glory, God. So I pray for mental health tonight. I pray for emotional health tonight, God. We need to cling to your word, cling to you, cling to your word, God. Yes, we need to be able to talk, God. We know that you've given us others to talk to, God, but we the strength that we need is found in you. Bless you for tonight. Praise you for the night, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Take this word with you. Make it portable. When people start talking about down stuff, you talk about your God and how great he is and how he's keeping you in spite of everything. Somebody needs that encouragement. Be blessed. Have a great rest of your week in the Lord.